What's up everybody? Today we're going to be working on a Gens Benz El Diablo 100. This one is here with a complaint that it's losing power, losing volume. I've got it warmed up here so we can turn it on and see what's going on with it. First thing I noticed when I hit the power button, I see all these interesting little LED lights. And in the back there, there are only two power tubes and there should be four. More than likely there's something going on there. So interestingly enough this does have a 50 and 100 watt switch on the back so I went and downloaded the manual real quick to check it out and see if there is a reason why two tubes were pulled. The manual does state that the 50 watt switch disconnects two of the power tubes. Doesn't say which two. It also doesn't state that you need to change the impedance that you're using for the output if you're going to lose two tubes. So I did put the switch in 50 watt mode. That's how it was when it arrived. There's something definitely going on with the, uh, the foot switch connector. It appears to be broken. Go ahead, power it down and get it out. So I took the EL34s out of the amp and I put them on the tester here. Everything's reading correctly, but once I put a uh, plate voltage on there, it did sound kind of funny. Like usually you can't hear anything, but I did pick up uh, an audible hum out of the, the two tubes. So the plate current for this one is 35.6. The other one's 37.4. Transconductance looks good for both. I'm reading 5.12, 5.41. A little bit off from each other, but not too bad. So the tubes really should be okay. At least they're testing okay. That doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna function correctly in the amplifier. So taking an actual look inside here, notice a lot of interesting stuff going on. You can see that this is wet. It doesn't smell like anything. And you can also see from here that this has gotten wet at some point in time. This is probably beer or something. First, let's address this problem with the switch here. I'm not sure how this broke. I might be able to fix that with some glue. A quick fix on that since we didn't have a replacement jack. There's nothing wrong with the jack itself. It's just coming loose from the sleeve. So I just took a soldering iron and just kind of melted it a little bit right around the edge here. So it doesn't look all that pretty, but it's not moving anymore. Between that and the glue at the very, very end, it's holding. It shouldn't pop out and none of the solder connections have been affected whatsoever. Yeah, I'm pushing on it and it's it's not moving at all. So let's go ahead and remount this jack. If I can get this out the door with just the parts I have on hand, then great. Customer's happy, I'm happy. If for some reason we cannot and we do have to order some parts, I might as well just go ahead and order a replacement jack. For this amplifier though, I am very comfortable with that fix. The amp has a peculiar setup here for the bias, so it appears that in order to cut two tubes out of the equation, what it's doing is it's disconnecting the cathode to ground on the outer two tubes. And I've identified that because it's got some 10 ohm resistors between the cathode and ground here. So if I put my meter here for continuity, I've got like 90 ohms to ground when I should have zero. So if I flip that switch to put it in 50 watt mode, now I've got a completely open circuit. So the top of this terminal, we've got less than one ohm to ground, which is good. The bottom terminal of that circuit, I've got like 
100 ohms. So I'm getting resistance through this switch. So let's set this back to DC volts. So I've got the bias trim pot set as low as it'll go and I'm at 45 millivolts and I'm at 65, 67 <clears throat> on the outer two tubes. If I can correct that grounding issue through the switch, that would take care of that. So what I'm going to do here is let's turn this back to ohms from the lowest ohm setting. So this should be connected to ground. All right, chassis ground. I like how they use painted nuts and washers to attach the earth ground to the chassis. It's like some stuff just doesn't make a lot of sense. So I cannot find a schematic for the 100 watt version. I did find a schematic for the 60. And going by what we know for bias circuits, the 60 shows a 4.7K resistor and a 220K resistor to ground. In the bias circuit. I've identified two resistors right by the bias trim pot that have the same values. So one of them, yeah, so that should be our ground right here. And on the other side of this, if I set my meter, I guess those capacitors have to discharge a little bit for me to get the correct reading on this one, but this should drop to about 220. So the other side of this resistor, I've got zero ohms. So, if we can lift that resistor and put another one in series with it, then we should be able to get the bias closer to where we want it. So just to experiment here, let's take the ground end of this resistor out. Now better, but we were still a little too high. 36 milliamps, and I really want to be, or millivolts, I would really want to be closer to 31. And that actually may rise a little bit because the amp is kind of cold. I put a 51K resistor in series with that 220K to bring it down to about 270K to ground. Now if I raise that up to, 330k that probably will be closer to what we want so I swapped out both of those resistors in the bias circuit now on this tube here eh we're still about as low as I want to be but I still would like to be able to go lower but that's not that's not too bad we're at about 60 percent at 30 milliamps all right so I've temporarily defeated this 5100 watt switch over here. Now I am reading 10 ohms to ground for each of these resistors, which means now I have a solid path here. I'd say that's good. <laughs> Bias seems fairly stable for where we're at. We are still the lowest the trim pot can possibly go. So maybe we'll trade out that one of those resistors one more time. So we've got a whole host of things going on with this. So the continuity on that switch is not very good. So I've got a similar switch. This is a rocker that would go in a Marshall standby. And when I close this switch, I've got zero ohms here, which is what you want. So that's the switch that was in there. And the continuity on these contacts. So I've got like, it's fluctuating, 30 ohms there. So the contacts within the switch are dirty. A Marshall style switch will not fit I don't know that that's a feature that's even worth keeping. 
to be honest. So the reverb is not working, and uh, that's more than likely the reverb tank. Vintage clean switch on the foot switch does not work. So having trouble with the foot switch, I didn't know if it's something in the cable itself because they give you this crazy long cable here. And of course it is a proprietary connection or it's a five pin DIN so I'd have to replace this whole cable to check. But if I take, I've got a probe connected to ground and I can, the orange wire is controlling the classic high gain setting. This red wire here controls the compression. There's a brown wire underneath. That's the attack. My yellow wire is my vintage clean switch. Oh, the green wire must be the ground then. So I've got one, two, three, four. Okay, there we go. So to figure this out, I've disconnected the red wire. And every time I would plug the foot switch in, uh, the clean and vintage clean switch on the clean channel would always be illuminated no matter what. And when I tested the end of the plug for continuity, I was constantly getting continuity between this and the shield, which is supposed to be the ground. So I've got the back side of this switch tied into the corresponding pin on this jack here. So essentially I'm just bypassing the cable and I've got the end of this lead tied to the other side of the switch which would be grounding out this circuit and when I touch it to ground then everything illuminates. So that just tells me that there's nothing wrong with the amplifier on that end that we just have a shorted wire in this cable. Here. Now we could just replace the cable on this to make it work, but we would have to get a six pin DIN cable here. I could also make this work if I had a seven pin MIDI cable, but then I would have to change the end here. So we might be making things a little bit more complicated than they need to be. I mean, all in all, just buy another switch. But it would be nice if this was replaced with something that was a little bit more readily available. Honestly, I think a better design for stuff like this would be to have a plug on both ends so you could replace the cable if the cable's ever damaged. In this case, if the cable's damaged, you have to replace the whole foot switch. Alright, so the bias circuit's been modified. The tubes are a little bit colder. And we figured everything else out. Kind of curious about the reverb. The tank looks like it's in decent shape. There were a couple stray wires here on this transducer. I don't know if that's uh, I don't know what you call that when there's a strange metallic growth. But there are no broken wires on the transducer. And there's no broken wires on the jacks. So this appears that it would be working. So I've got the reverb turned all the way up. And there's obviously there's no reverb here. But I can hit the springs and I'm getting some sound. So we know the tank is working. Okay, so we got the reverb working again. There's a quick connect that goes on this transducer here. I don't know where it was not making contact, but I cut that out. I put in a couple of alligator clips to jump it. And now... Now the reverb's working. Quick recap here. I did modify the bias circuit, just these two components here, because I wanted to get the bias down on this new quad of tubes that's in there. I've got EL34s in the amp. Now I haven't tied this off yet, but I, I did put the switch back in there just for cosmetic reasons, but this is going to be defeated, or it has been defeated. I'm just going to go ahead and zip tie that back up <clears throat> so, so it's not flopping around in there. And over here, I just went ahead and bridged these two connections. So this 50 100 watt switch, all it does is open and close the connections here. Like one goes to ground and one comes from 
the cathode resistor on these two outside power tubes. And the issue with this was that there is too much resistance between these two contacts. I couldn't get a Marshall style switch to fit and sourcing one of these proved pretty difficult. I looked for a little while and was not able to find this exact rocker switch. I didn't take any measurements of it, but a couple of these parts were hard to find, especially this six pin DIN connector. I did find a distributor that had a couple of these. If I were to work on the foot switch, I would just make a 30 foot cable and then put one of these female connectors on the foot switch itself. That way the foot switch wouldn't be useless if the cable got damaged, but even trying to find a six pin cable is kind of difficult. What I would suggest if you were to work on this would be to replace this with a seven pin MIDI connector and also do the same thing in the foot switch. So you can actually take this cable out and install that panel mount connector there. At that point, you can just buy seven pin MIDI cables and everything would work. Of course, you'd have one unused pin. You'd have to do a little rewiring, but I think it'd be worth it in the long run. Make way more sense than this because you can't just find one of these foot pedals on the road, but you can order a seven pin MIDI cable from anywhere. I swapped this chip out for a minute because I was trying to figure out what was wrong with the reverb. When I would bang on the springs and it would still make noise, that told me that at least I knew the return cable was good. So I flipped the cables here and reversed them on the tank. The cable still worked, so we know it wasn't a problem here and it wasn't a problem with that chip. So I went back to the reverb tank itself and I started manipulating this quick connect that was here and I got the reverb to come back on. So the quick connect was bad. Easy enough fix. It's got these two nice prongs on the transducer here, so I just went ahead and hardwired those in. The one on the other side seemed to be okay, so that one is still in. Plug it back in. We're going to give it one more test, make sure everything works before we put it back together, and then we're done. And of course, I do need to re-zip tie this wire over here, get that out of the way, and re-zip tie the reverb cables because I did unclip those to have some slack to play with them. And we also figured out that there was a problem with the foot switch. The red wire which controls the clean and vintage switching, that was actually shorted to the shield of that cable. This type of amp has a lot of distortion in the front end so I don't think you need the output section bias very hot at all. You should probably go down to about 60 or 50 percent especially in an amp like this. I would recommend not using that 50 watt mode. There's a lot going on electrically that has to be taken into consideration when doing that. And the manual states none of that. Impedance mashing in transformers and tubes is a long winded conversation. I think we should save that for another video, but I will post a link below to some resources that'll help explain that in a way a little bit better than I can. So hopefully this might help you out if you have similar issues with this amp. Nothing too major, just a little bit of troubleshooting going on. So thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.